Are we all set? Good afternoon. Welcome to Encore Palm Beach County special event. Introducing our founder, Rosemary Nixon, who will be facilitating an interview with James Green. You'll be hearing more about him in just a moment. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Rosemary Nixon. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you, James, for joining us today. As it said in our newsletter, James is a director of the Palm Beach County Community Services Department. And um, before I go into grilling you, James, uh, maybe you'd like to share a little bit about what your department does. Sure, I'd be happy to. So Community Services is a county uh, government department. We work with all 39 municipalities throughout uh, Palm Beach County to provide uh, an array of health and human services. And so uh, we focus on providing services to seniors. We have a senior services division. We go into the homes and we provide any type of assistance that they need, but we also operate uh, about 18 different uh, adult uh, daycare centers and services site or meal sites throughout the county. Seniors can come in and they can uh, socialize and be active and play games and uh, also have meals and, uh, and, and the adult daycare center sites allow, uh, allows people who uh, are working uh, to leave their, their um, parents who may need some additional supervision um, there at the site while they work and so they can have a peace of mind. And so those respite services are offered throughout the county as well. Uh, in addition to that, we uh, are the uh, backbone entity for the homeless system of care. So we fund uh, a number of agencies for homelessness, uh, you know, the Lord's Place, Goodwill, Adopt a Family, just to name a few. But we also provide direct services uh, to address homelessness. And so uh, we operate the, the shelters. We contract with Goodwill to operate the shelters. Uh, we also work with a host of system partners to uh, provide uh, support services necessary for people to end their, their homelessness and to prevent people from being homeless. Uh, we service a backbone entity for the Ryan White program. Uh, there we provide an array of services for people with HIV and AIDS to make sure that they get the supports they need uh, to, to become virally suppressed. We serve as uh, almost like the backbone entity for the opioid crisis. So we have the housing czar I mean, the opioid czar kind of housed in this department, and we work with a number of agencies uh, to provide services in mental health, behavioral health, substance use disorders uh, to address that issue. And then we also um, work with a number of low-income individuals and families to help move them out of poverty. And so we work closely with career source and other entities to provide training and education and skills and support services so they can gain employment, earn more, and eventually uh, become uh, greater contributors to uh, our community. So we're, we're a funder. We fund about 125 different programs and nonprofits, and we're also a direct service provider. Thank you, James. That's quite an array of uh, services being offered in the county, big job. Um, let me just uh, say that when we started Encore Palm Beach County four years ago, um, we did a survey of agencies and programs that were uh, focused on tapping into the skills, experience, and knowledge of particularly people moving here to Palm Beach County who are over 50, perhaps retired. And when we looked at um, what organizations are really focused on tapping into that skill bank, we didn't find too much really. Um, <clears throat> organizations and departments like yours and the Area Agency on Aging were focused primarily on the services that could be delivered to people who need them. But what we've been talking about is the ability of people, older people, to help deliver services, to help um, meet the volunteer needs of the community. So that's what we've been focused on for the last four years. 
And um, that's particularly our focus this month on how we can increase volunteerism in Palm Beach County and learn from others about the most effective way of reaching people, involving them as volunteers, uh, training programs for them and so forth. So that's kind of what we're focusing on um, this month with our Zoom programs. Now, I know you have a demanding job based on what you just said and a family, but Karen Roberts, who um, suggested I contact you, tells us that you have a passion for volunteering and a longstanding commitment to volunteer service yourself. Um, so uh, if you would share with us the source of your commitment, um, how you began and where that direction is taking you now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rosemary, uh, for, for the overview. So I'm originally uh, from Alabama. I've been here for a couple of decades now. I come from a, a, a large family, so I have 16 uh, siblings. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so my, my, my father was married twice, so my mom had uh, nine kids, and I'm right smack dab in the middle of that, that bunch. And then uh, I have a set of older brothers and sisters, uh, eight, uh, in fact. And, and so we are, you know, one of the interesting things about growing up is even though we had so many people, you know, within our household, my father and my mother always welcomed others who were uh, experiencing challenges. And so throughout my childhood, uh, we would see um, people who, you know, maybe kicked the kids out of the house or they were going through some other challenges with the child welfare system. They would just allow them to come stay with us and, and we would uh, help them. Uh, you know, I, I grew up as seven day Adventist. I'm no longer an Adventist, but uh, and, and that, you know, there were opportunities to go out and to do uh, mission trips and, and to really focus on, um, you know, spreading the gospel. And, uh, and then as an adult, um, being engaged in the community allows you to become more uh, as a, a part of the community. And so uh, shortly after I moved to Florida, I, I worked at a residential facility and ran that facility. Uh, so I was there for about seven years. And then when I came over on this end, uh, the residential facility was in Clewiston, Florida. Uh, when I moved to Palm Beach County, I started working with the Urban League of, of Palm Beach County. And that is where uh, my footprint in the community in terms of volunteerism and, and really uh, tapping into all of the various systems uh, began. Uh, you know, working with the child welfare system, the juvenile justice system, working uh, and understanding the how politics work throughout the county. And, uh, you know, what I started doing was galvanizing young professional groups uh, to address some of the social issues that were taking place in our community. And that's kind of where, in terms of my adult and professional experiences, where my volunteerism really took hold is when I began to work at the Urban League. Fast forward, I, you know, when I came to the county, obviously things opened up quite uh, a bit. We, we um, operate the Community Action Program and Community Action is exactly how it sounds. It's, you know, it's a program that really engages the community on a lot of different fronts, but primarily we're there to make sure that people are involved in issues, uh, social justice issues, and, and to make sure people are completely invested and engaged in their community, whether that's helping them to start a business, whether that's helping them to obtain employment and, and to give back and be contributors of their community, or whether that is serving on various boards and committees uh, that are working to address issues. And so I began to do some community organizing and, and ever since then it's just grown and expanded um, when I took this role as director, obviously we're over senior services and human services. The department is a pretty big department. There are opportunities for volunteering all around. And so, you know, during my work day, you know, I'm, I'm doing my job, but during the weekend, uh, oftentimes you'll see me and my kids 
are out, you know, helping out with different feeding sites or volunteering uh, with various activities that are going on in the community. So that's kind of an overview of how uh, I became engaged and, and some of the things that we've been involved in. Um, I noticed that on your um, bio that you're actively engaged with young black youth. Yes. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Sure. So in 2014, the county mayor appointed me to lead the My Brother's Keepers task force. And uh, basically, that was a challenge that was issued by President Obama. Um, we he, he looked across the country and even here locally, I'll give you local stats, but the implications are the same across the country. Um, if less than 26 percent of our black male third graders were reading at grade level. So essentially if you went to any given school and you lined up um, 10 uh, black males, uh, less than three of those would be able to read and kind of understand what they're reading. Uh, it, when, you, when you move to the 10th grade, uh, it, it only had moved up to about 40%, uh, but you know, and the graduation rate was, was pretty low as well in comparison to uh, Latinos and whites. And so this initiative was really about how do you begin to help kids to enter school ready to learn, meaning they're prepared, they know the basics so that they can learn once they get into kindergarten. How do you get them to read at grade level by the time they're in the third grade? How do you uh, make sure that they are graduating high school on time and moving into post-secondary education? How do you get those kids who are disconnected, whether they're in the child welfare system or juvenile justice system? How do you begin to uh, reconnect them to school or to work so that they can become productive members of society? And how do you focus on uh, ensuring that they're maintained uh, throughout adulthood and, and that they're given second chances? And so we, uh, as a task force leader, we, we focused on galvanizing all of the groups that were doing this work. There are a lot of mentoring programs and agencies that are out there, but none of them are working together and getting the levels of support that they need. And so the network is about making sure that we knew who all of those individuals or those programs or uh, entities were, making sure that we could introduce them to financial supports because most of them were just volunteering, whether that's you know, playing, you know, volunteering as a coach uh, in one of the little leagues or whether that was them starting their own nonprofit uh, just to help kids with mentoring and tutoring to help you know, uh, the outcomes that I just uh, shared with you or you know, whether that was you know, them going and speaking to kids and just really trying to motivate them to do better uh, for themselves. Uh, this network was designed to bring them all together to make sure that they were connected to uh, funding structures that could support the work they're doing, make sure that they understood the needle uh, and the goals, the shared goals that we were all trying to achieve, and to make sure that they had support, meaning uh, getting mentors from businesses, from getting mentors from the county or the city or nonprofits to help uh, them in their mission. And so it was a really successful initiative. Uh, we, we made a lot of progress uh, helping kids to get internships, jobs, helping them to, I think we moved the reading uh, scores up by 6% within a, a span of uh, two years throughout the county. And the graduation also increased um, by almost uh, 10%. And so there it was a lot of focus on just making sure that they have the supports they need needed to deal with the trauma that many of them had experienced and making sure that they knew that they did matter and, and they do matter and that people do care about their well-being and success. Thank you. That's uh, very interesting to hear. So um, where do you see volunteers in your arena? Um, your department provides services, but where can people um, volunteer? How much contact do you have personally with volunteers through the department? And uh, where do people go to sign up? 
So there are a number of uh, avenues uh, that uh, people have to volunteer with the department. Uh, the, the, the structure that we have that probably recruits the most volunteers is through our uh, senior services uh, division. So uh, there are volunteer opportunities for seniors who have skills. Maybe they know how to knit or maybe they are yoga instructors or Zumba instructors or, uh, or maybe they just like to facilitate games and discussions or there are a host of different activities that seniors volunteer uh, for. Uh, at our various senior centers and mill sites. And so uh, if they're interested in volunteering, then they would, uh, they would just call 561-355-4703 and uh, indicate uh, their desire to volunteer and they'll be provided a form. And that form uh, will allow them to ask key questions capitalize on their strengths and make sure that they're pointed in the right direction uh, in terms of volunteering. James, as I'm sure you know, there are multitude of areas in which volunteers are needed in the county. Um, mm -hmm. Senior services just being one, right. uh, young people being another, mm -hmm. um, but the people that are um, possibly retiring here may have a variety of interests. So what we've been trying to do is to gather on our website all the resources that links, I don't know whether you had a chance to look at, all the links to all the volunteer job boards that we could find, as well as listing those volunteer opportunities that people shared with us. And so when we meet people, we try to help them connect. And um, because Palm Beach County is a very big place, it can be very confusing for people who are new to the area. It can take a lot of time to figure it out. And some people never really are able to figure it out. So um, one of the things that uh, we have on our website is the job board for Palm Beach County itself. But like every other volunteer organization, people don't know it exists, I think. Um, so even if we point it out, people will say, gee, I didn't know that there was uh, a place to contact the county to volunteer for all those different areas that volunteers are needed in. Um, uh, does the county have an effective way of communicating and reaching out, well, to the thousands of households in Palm Beach County and 50% of our residents are over 50? Um, I don't see that there's good communication going out to people. And I just wonder, is there a way of, you know, uh, the county could do, frankly, a better job of communicating the need for volunteers in our county? Absolutely. I, I, I would agree in that we can certainly enhance our process for, for recruiting volunteers. I think uh, during this pandemic, especially with seniors, that's just not hasn't been a, a, a focus because of the nature of uh, of what we're dealing with. Uh, we want seniors to actually remain home, and perhaps there are things that they can do while they're at home. Uh, but uh, so so I know that you know that active uh, recruitment uh, has not occurred as of late. I think um, perhaps last year, the year before last. Uh, we were a lot more active in uh, recruiting volunteers on a different number of different fronts. So I'll, I'll just share a few. Uh, when we experienced um, hurricanes or when we experienced when Hurricane Maria uh, happened and, and a lot of uh, individuals were displaced or Hurricane Dorian happened and uh, many of the Bahamians were displaced, uh, our department was responsible for uh, coordinating uh, housing and supports for those individuals. So the structure that is currently in place is uh, our department through the emergency management uh, division 
works with United Way, and there is actually an individual, there is a, a group of individuals uh, that recruit volunteers to assist uh, where needed to meet the unmet needs. And so uh, in the past couple of years, we've been pretty successful. Uh, we would send out a press release, there would be uh, you know, engagements on, on the news uh, and in other areas. And uh, we, we worked with uh, United Way to recruit volunteers that could help sort items uh, that were donated, that could help uh, provide support services for people who are displaced, uh, that could help even with uh, some of the recovery efforts uh, that were taking place around the county. And so, uh, you know, in that regard, in terms of emergency management, there is a structure in place and a partner that we work with and a person that's responsible for the recruitment efforts. And, uh, and they work with mostly churches uh, to do that. Uh, as, as it relates to um, the pandemic, there has absolutely been uh, a few efforts, but not necessarily aimed towards seniors. Uh, these efforts uh, were coordinated through churches. So churches would uh, either put together like uh, wash packets and things of that nature so that we could uh, give them to the homeless and make sure that they had showers and hygiene products and things of that nature. Uh, our churches also worked with uh, municipalities and people who were in need to uh, pro provide care packages to them. And so we worked a lot with churches and actually formulated a committee called Faith in Action uh, to assist regionally with uh, support services for the more than 4,000 kids who are experiencing homelessness in Palm Beach County as according to the school district data. And so in that regard, they're plugged in regionally and they're providing uh, you know, food and other types of supports for those families, but specifically as it relates to seniors, and obviously there are some seniors who are involved, uh, they're mostly coordinating uh, like feedings and, and things of that nature. Uh, and finally, um, there are you know, just opportunities for seniors to, and we have had this level of engagement uh, to come in and to provide uh, services like we work with AARP and others uh, for them to, to be in, uh, in the office and doing clerical duties. And there are a number of opportunities where you know, seniors who are retired school teachers uh, or educators uh, can provide tutoring services, especially now that the digital divide has created such, uh, um, it's wreaked havoc, to be honest with you, on the very poor in that their educational attainment or their academic um, progress is they're really struggling. Having teachers who are retired to go in and to work with the Literacy Coalition and to work with uh, other entities involved with the Birth to 22 Alliance uh, to provide supports, tutoring supports and things of that nature uh, in our low income neighborhoods has actually been a, a huge need and, and definitely an area uh, where they can kind of tap into. Um, James, I, I appreciate the fact that for some time we've all been absorbed with uh, the pandemic as another emergency on top of hurricanes and and uh, economic distress and so forth. Um, and people are focused on, you know, what needs to be done right now. But we're going to be exiting this pandemic, hopefully, within the next 12 months. And um, so I'm thinking more about what could be done to let people out there, not just seniors. In fact, we don't use the word seniors, uh, James. It's people over 50, but uh, everybody really the, about the extent to which volunteers are needed in our community. And um, whether it's virtual volunteer opportunities that people can do online, such as we are, or tests that can be brought to them where they live in a residential facility, or whether it is um, release programs for employees 
to contribute uh, to their communities. Is there a way, a structure that every household in Palm Beach County can be um, prevailed upon or the message um, reach them that volunteers are needed in so many ways and maybe directing them to some central website. In other words, the county, at least some county department, whether it's yours or another, um, mail stuff to every household mm -hmm. uh, at some time or another, whether it's the appraiser's office, the Department of Motor Vehicles, um, uh, whatever. Uh, could there not be something that, you know, is highlighted and says, uh, we need you, I guess, like old Uncle Sam in World War II. Mm -hmm. We need you. And um, if you're interested in helping out, then this click here or call this or yeah, whatever. Sure. And there are people, hopefully, who can help you figure out what you want, what's the right volunteer opportunity for you. And um, this is another one of our focus. Um, uh, Joni Cherbo and Christine Cattagio are uh, board members on this call. And they have a workshop scheduled for the 24th of this month that focuses on exactly that. How do you help people figure out where they fit, you know, where they are best suited to serve and what interests them? And, the, and of course, there's no one central place for that, but uh, there is a need for it. Yeah. And um, so do you see that there's a way the county can be more aggressive, I guess is the word I'm looking for in reaching out to everybody, whether they're 50 or older or younger? Yeah, so the short answer to your question is, yes, I think we can, you know, certainly look at ways to leverage volunteer opportunities uh, and uh, to create channels for people to volunteer. You know, we sent out uh, the mask. We sent out masks to every household um, in Palm Beach County and being able to insert some type of uh, mailer in, in that when uh, doing that distribution uh, that could provide direction in terms of volunteer activities, uh, you know, would, would be useful. And if we, if we do something like that again, it's certainly something that we would consider. Uh, and just being able to, I, I do think that when you provide those opportunities, you do need to have a structure uh, to, uh, to uh, kind of receive all those calls and to be able to triage them appropriately. I don't know if you have sharing, if you can give me sharing rights, but I wanna show some, something to you that I think speaks to um, what you're asking. Are you able to uh, provide me with sharing rights or to go to a site? Uh, Christine? Is it possible for us to share something that James has? Well, yeah. If you, if you, if you're able, hey, uh, if you allow me to share, okay, uh, then I want to show you, and I think this speaks to uh, what you're saying uh, in terms of a, having a more systematic approach to volunteer recruitment, uh, but it's just kind of honed in uh, in the homelessness arena as opposed to. Uh, you know, the en entire spectrum of opportunities available for volunteering. So um, you're on mute, Christine. Christine? Christine? You're, you're, you're on mute, Christine. You're on mute, Christine. What I did, sorry. I'm trying to find that for you so that we can get you up there. Can, can you log on to uh, this site and just share it yourself? Mm, that I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I can share a screen, but I need a screen to share. So let's see how we can do that. So, 
so the way that you uh, give me presenter rights, if you go to participants at the bottom, there are two little people. You go to participants, you can click on that. And when you click on it, you'll see a, a, a number of names come up. Mm -hmm. Click, and you can give presenter rights to me by right clicking on my name. Okay. All righty. So I'm selecting one participant at a time. Um, all so participants. Let's see. Okay. Let's start sharing. Okay. Let's see. There you go. So I have it. I have it now. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. It says the homelessplan.org. Yeah. So this is a centralized site. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of things on the site. The first one thing that I want to show you, and this is how we've engaged. We, we started a group, I mentioned Faith in Action, so that we can have a regional approach to addressing homelessness with our churches. Uh, and so if they click on Get Engaged here, I'm going to click on this button. What will happen is it says current volunteer opportunities include things like the point in time count, mentor, mentoring, all of these things. And then here's, here's what they can do. They can put their name, their address, all of that information in, and then they can look at all of these opportunities, whether they want to help by maybe renting a room to a homeless family or provide employment or employment skills, You'll see any type of healthcare services, transportation, legal, case management, food. Uh, they can assist with just counting the homeless on the street. Uh, all of these are volunteer opportunities, but they can also write in things that they think they can do to help uh, and, and leave comments. And once they hit submit, then this would go to our, um, our staff, dedicated staff, and then they would triage them to the opportunities that are available and make sure that they count their hours and make sure that they do uh, anything else that is, is necessary. So for homelessness, we have, you know, I typically just have people to go to thehomelessplan.org, to this site, and to hit the Get Engaged button, and they can volunteer that way. Uh, but, you know, I think what you're asking is, how can we have a central point of focus like volunteer.org or something um, uh, in Palm Beach County where they can go and they can figure out all of the volunteer opportunities throughout the entire county and, um, and have a person that could you know, support uh, that structure so that they can triage them and follow up with them. Uh, and account for all of their volunteer hours, or maybe even they just you know have a link that goes to your site, which has all the volunteer opportunities. Um, so if you didn't know that this website existed, how would you find it? Well, I think uh, we, for like I said, what we've done is we identified all of the churches. We used the churches and the businesses. Okay. So we identified the all of the churches in, in Palm Beach County, there are 15, 1,200 and I think 46 faith-based, registered faith-based entities. And what we what we did was we, um, we hosted this faith in action uh, forum in regionally. So we went out, we, we sent flyers to all of the churches via email and through mail, and we invited them to hear about how the homeless services system worked, what we're doing well, where we're having challenges. And then we uh, told them, we, we, we provided information for them to get engaged uh, and introduce this link. So we only focused on engaging the faith-based community uh, regarding this, but I think just doing something for the broader community might present an opportunity as well. Yeah, maybe I'm simple-minded, but it seems to me that there should be a vehicle that connects with every household that the county has the ability to reach that says, if you're interested in being a volunteer, go here. And it takes you to the county volunteer site. The one we have on our website, if I click on that and I go there, it shows me a, a, a small range 
of volunteer opportunities. You know, there is a form to fill out and so forth. But I don't think it's very extensive. And I recognize that this isn't a priority for everybody, given all the problems that people have been dealing with. But we're thinking forward into the future mm -hmm. to maximize volunteer participation in Palm Beach County. So, um, you know, what can be done? It may take time to, because the wheels of uh, government turn slowly, I guess, um, to keep it simple, keep it simple. Um, and, and, but maximize the opportunities to volunteer. And then are there people who can help people figure out what is right for them? Or is that beyond the capacity of um, the county to, to do? Well, I think you need a person to support what you're describing. Uh, so I think you do need a person and perhaps that person could be a volunteer themselves, right? But you need a person that is, is able to, um, to take all of these requests. Uh, like there might be, we have a, a youth uh, speakers bureau where people can go out and speak uh, about various aspects of the county um, or maybe like tw channel 20. Channel 20 is our local news channel. Maybe there is an opportunity for that to be consistently uh, shared uh, via channel 20 um, or um, in various avenues. I think to, I think the, the bottom line is there absolutely could be uh, an enhanced effort to leverage uh, the volunteer capacity uh, of the, the number of people that are out there willing to help. There is absolutely uh, a way that we can enhance those efforts, streamline it, and, uh, and really uh, capitalize on people who want to give back uh, throughout Palm Beach County. And it's certainly something uh, that I'm willing to, uh, to work on. Thank you. You anticipated my next question, which is always, um, who could make this happen? Um, you know, I, I'm talking with somebody at three o'clock today who has an idea of something that Boncourt should do. And, you know, I said to him, tell me what, how you would design it you know, and who would be the person who would be best equipped to design what we're talking about. Um, and uh, also including, as we <clears throat> said, um, who are the people who can help people find the right opportunity. It's one thing to list things. It's another to say, listen, I'm willing to give you a little guidance here. So um, as I said, we have a workshop coming up on the 24th that Christine and, and um, Joni are uh, running. And that is focused on how do you figure out what's right for you? And maybe you could share that information about that upcoming workshop. It was in our newsletter. We can send you additional information, James, but maybe there's somebody that needs to, you know, learn a little bit more about that as part of creating a structure. I guess when I ask the question, because I am a simple person, uh, yeah, anybody who knows me would start to laugh about that. Um, but, you know, I kind of visualized there's something that gets mailed to somebody's house. And there's a little blurb on it that says, if you're interested in getting involved and in solving the problems of our uh, county, go here. Uh, so uh, that may be too simple, but um, that's kind of something I had in mind. And it sounds as if, if we were to uh, encourage uh, the structure that you're talking about, that we should follow up with you. Is that correct? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As a place to begin? You know, I'm, I'm willing, I'm certainly willing to, um, to help out where I can. Uh, and, you know, I would, I would tend to want to go back to you. I mean, you're, you already have infrastructure 
to, to address this, we would love to be able to partner with you and your organization. Okay. To, you know, to, to make something like this happen. I see Joni had a hand up and wanted to make some comments, but, you know, I, th I think that, um, you know, just being able to partner with you and your group, uh, Rosemary, would be uh, a fabulous way for us to, um, to work, collaborate together to make this happen. Uh, unmute yourself, Joni. Joni, you're muted. Unmute yourself. Hi. Um, and exactly to this, what we were speaking about, Rosemary, I think I brought it to your attention. And James, I'm not sure you know about a group called Volunteer Match here in Palm Beach County which I have, I'm showing you, I have a list of, I would say 20 volunteer organizations of many stripes where ha that have listed their needs for volunteers. I don't know where they come from or who's funding them, of course, which is important as well, but here they are. I can give you their, ref their website and I think they're well ahead of us in trying to to do some centralized work in this regard. And we should definitely look into them. They're www.volunteermatch.org slash, right slash, search question mark one equal Palm Beach County, Florida, USA. I have- Let me see if I can, let me see if I can- Bring them up, yeah. Uh, if you go to our website, uh, on the uh, volunteer page. It is one of the links on our volunteer page. You did put it on, okay. I don't know anything about them, except that I found them. Well, it's a national organization. Um, usually, uh, I think, I don't wanna say anything that's incorrect, um, but um, they, I think the nonprofits have to, pay to post volunteer opportunities, um, but it's there. And sometimes people find something in their area. That's why we have all these different um, job boards on our volunteer page, but um, the one for the county uh, could be more robust. I mean, we don't, you know, we don't create the, um, uh, data on it. Um, so there could be uh, more. And I think that comes under the heading of the structure that needs some thinking about. There is, if there is a structure, maybe we can augment it and enhance it uh, for this county. Hmm? I, think well, that's what I, I think that's what James is suggesting. But there is one in this organization, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I think I think I think what what you guys are describing is it, it currently exists. Um, looking at what you just shared, John, exactly. and you know everything from advocacy to you right. know, for youth and technology and literacy and health mm -hmm. years and, and more is here. Uh, so you know it's certainly something valuable that um, that I wasn't aware of that I think is very useful as we move forward and we want to leverage uh, volunteer opportunities. So thank you. Yeah, the, the issue is that people don't know this website exists. People don't know the county's website exists. People don't know the United Way jo Volunteer Job Board exists. Do you see where I'm going with this? Absolutely. So, I mean, I think that's the ultimate. Uh, there's two, two pieces to this. One is people don't know these sites exist, for one thing. And then if they do want to volunteer, they really don't get very much guidance as to what's the right volunteer opportunity for them. That's two sides of the coin, I think. Yeah, well, I think there are plenty of opportunities here, especially at the advisory board capacity. We have board uh, slots that need to be filled, subcommittees on board that, that could help. So 
I, I think what, what I'll begin by doing is making sure that my leadership team is aware of this and that we're uh, leveraging it, but also I can share it with uh, my network of funders and others. And I will have this conversation with the uh, county administrator about um, you know, whether she'd be willing to, to do a mailer to everyone with something like this so that they know that they can go here and sign up if they'd like to volunteer. Well, now I think we're cooking with gas. Um, Christine, you, you say there are other questions waiting. Yes, I, know. I believe Karen Roberts has some questions. Karen, did you want to open the questioning? Okay, thank you. I'm sorry I'm not on screen today, but hello everyone hey. and James, thank you hey, so much. Hey Karen, how are Thanks you? Thanks so much for being on the call. I'm doing good. I have good. a question, James. Um, appreciate all the information you've shared already, but you mentioned specifically about a program in your organization helping people get out of poverty and you work with Career Source Palm Beach County. The question I wanted to ask you is, um, I know you're very aware because you and I, uh, of course, have uh, knowledge about our aging network here in Palm Beach County, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of need for caregivers. And I wondered if um, one of the programs you work with, uh, do you work with any programs that help uh, perhaps train or get folks ready to be caregivers? Uh, so, you know, I have, I think the short answer to your question is yes. Uh, to what extent, um, I'm, I'm going to have to defer, if, uh, if I can, to Faith, who's on the call, Faith, because she, she operates uh, those initiatives, and she can share details about um, how we support, care, support and train caregivers. Yeah, okay. Well, Good talk afternoon. Hi, Faith. Hi, Karen. How are you? Hi, Faith. Great. And again, I'm asking about folks that are caregivers are maybe wanting to be reskilled to learn how to be a caregiver for a paid employment, you know, versus a family caregiver. Oh, okay. right. So we have um, two volunteer programs um, at the Division of Senior and Veteran Services. Um, and Karen, I don't know if you're familiar with them from the Area Agency on Aging, but one of them is the Senior Companion Program, um, and one of them is the Relief Program. And these yeah. are volunteer uh, stipend paid programs um, for volunteers out in the community who are trained to go into a senior's home and provide relief and or companionship to the caregivers. So they are, they assist the caregivers um, right. in their role as a caregiver. And also, so, so that's one of the programs we have in there. And then there's a small stipend for that. And then um, we also provide an educational program called Powerful Tools for Caregivers, as well as the Area Agency mm -hmm. on Aging, in which you yep. train caregivers and, and give them the tools mm -hmm. they need. But our yep. two volunteer programs are open to any, anyone that wants to volunteer and provide a service with a small stipend. It's really a win-win program out in the community because not only is it helping the senior, but it's helping the, sen the senior sometimes they can be any age for some of those programs that go into the home and assist the caregiver in the caregiving um, tasks that they need to do. Okay, thank you, Faith. Appreciate it. And thank you, James. Thank you. Good to, good to hear from you again, Karen. Um, other questions? If people have I'd a question, like they need to unmute themselves. I'd like to mention something that I haven't heard mentioned. Great information, James, I really appreciate it, thank you. Um, but as a longstanding member of a number of different service organizations who are always looking for projects, have you contacted or reached out to any of the local, um, usually very, um, I wanna say prosperous organizations? Um, have you reached out to any of those? Because especially now, since most of them are in meeting in person, they're looking for some other type of projects that they can get involved in. So is that something that you've been able to reach out to? Um, no, I have, like I said, we're still uh, dealing with the effects of the pandemic. And so our volunteer efforts are coordinated through the United Way uh, organization. Uh, we created that structure to, to be able to 
recruit volunteers and supports uh, during emergencies and disasters. Uh, beyond that, uh, most of our efforts have been around uh, pushing out CARES dollars. And so we did uh, reach out and we did, um, uh, we were able to access some volunteers to help uh, with you know, some of the processing of, uh, with some of the, um, with pushing the dollars uh, for rent and utility and food assistance out. So we were, we were able and successful at utilizing some volunteers in some of the roles there. Uh, but beyond that, uh, we have not because we haven't had the capacity to do much more than to meet the needs of, of residents who are struggling uh, with the effects of COVID. Uh, if, if I go back to what Rosemary was saying uh, in terms of looking forward uh, a year or so from now, uh, absolutely, I think uh, there will be uh, a number of opportunities to, to engage in some of, uh, with, with some of the agencies that you're mentioning uh, and uh, through the channels that we're mentioning on this call uh, to assist with some of the supports around homelessness, around uh, youth and tutoring and mentoring and, and uh, even to expand the uh, opportunities with our seniors uh, who, you know, uh, you know, we wanna make sure that they remain active and social and, and, uh, and that they get uh, the, the support services that they need. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up on that, James, uh, one of the things that we are working on, um, a member of our uh, organization, Athena Jackson is on the call and she's working with me to develop a program whereby nonprofits that have a task that can be done on site bring a project to people living in independent and assisted living facilities. I mean, there's a huge population in Palm Beach County that live in facilities like that. They've been isolated for a long time. Even going forward, they will probably continue to be isolated either because of age, infirmity, or um, concern about uh, the virus. Uh, and uh, do you have any uh, knowledge of how um, that a program like that could work with county uh, departments or volunteer nonprofit organizations that you know. Have I made myself clear? It's the kind of thing where you bring a, a task to a group of people. Um, we've already started to establish relationships with some of these residences like Abby Delray and, and um, Delray Beach and God knows there are plenty of them that maybe it's an old fashioned notion but um, whether it's stuffing envelopes or preparing kits or whatever, people like to work on a project uh, together and uh, it keeps them engaged in the community, even if they're not out there in it. And um, it helps to, you know, break down the isolation. Even if people live in a residence, they can still be isolated. So, um, that's something that we're working on. And do you have any ideas of how we could develop that? Where we could get support for it? Um, in terms of uh, development, uh, if you're, are you speaking more about, uh, you know, further developing your concepts or are you, are you speaking about uh, resources and, and supports, uh, even, even financial supports to help with the operations or implementation of it? All of the above. Um, so I'll need to do some some research to determine what um, resources are out there to to help to develop that. Uh, we we typically uh, do from time to time have uh, organizations, uh, companies like um, Florida Crystals or, or whomever, who want uh, an opportunity to give back. And uh, we have a, a, a nonprofit called Friends of uh, Community Services, Youth Services, Palm Beach County, uh, that they are able to provide resources uh, for and 
And we utilize those resources to help fill the gaps uh, that exist specifically uh, for seniors and low-income uh, residents. So uh, I'll just, I think the probably the best um, guidance that I can give you with regards to, to, with regard to that question is if you have a white paper or some type of um, document that summarizes what it is that you're looking to do and, uh, and where your areas of, you maybe the top three areas of greatest needs are, uh, then I could, I could likely connect you uh, to uh, some entities that uh, would, would hopefully want to support you in that regard. Okay, thank you, James. Uh, we do have a document that we could send to you that outlines what our thinking was. Um, actually quite simple, um, establishing relationships with, um, to begin with, uh, facilities in South Palm Beach County as they move out of the, um, into, you know, a more open uh, setting where people can come into a facility. Uh, and then we have a mailing list of nonprofits that we were just simply going to ask them if they have uh, possible projects and um, to set up an organizing structure of some kind uh, that could certainly use support from the county if there such is available. Um, as some of the people know, I started a program like this back in 1970 with the Retired Senior Volunteer Program of Greater Hartford. And we had nonprofits bringing projects to nursing homes uh, back then. So even people who are quite elderly can be still involved in some way um, if they choose to be. I would agree, absolutely. You know? So, um, so we could perhaps send that to you and go from there. Sure. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of James? Yes, James, does your organization have a newsletter? Uh, yes, so we have a newsletter for the department. We also have a newsletter for um, the senior services uh, division sends out a newsletter pretty regularly uh, just to keep seniors aware of activities that are taking place uh, to make sure that they have certain information, you know, information on how to prevent fraud, how to, um, you, know, you know, the latest on certain things that are happening in the community, uh, events that are happening around the community. So uh, we do have newsletters and uh, uh, they're on our website. Some of them, not the senior services one, but we do have um, some links to them as well. Okay, and so I can put it in the chat for everyone. What is your website? Uh, let me, I'll drop it in the chat. Give me one second here. Uh, and I'll just go to the site and drop it in the chat. for everyone. pbcgov.com forward slash community services. Okay. Uh, if there are no other questions from other people, I did have two more questions, James, if you have a minute more. And one was, uh, <clears throat> this was asked, by someone, what role does volunteerism play in the social justice movement? And if someone were interested, what's a good way to get involved? You know, social justice uh, just absolutely wouldn't, wouldn't um, take place without volunteers and people who really cared about uh, the community and the, the direction that we're headed in as a community. So um, I, think, I think it plays a tremendous role. And I mean, when you think about uh, many of the injustices that we've seen just over the past year and a half, two years, uh, we've seen volunteers mobilize in a way that has shifted legislation, shifted the narrative, uh, and that has you know, made a tremendous difference on a, a number of fronts. So um, what I think we lack is the, the level of information needed to sustain any meaningful change. Oftentimes we, uh, you know, we mobilize when there's 
uh, a sense of we have the sense of urgency at right after something happens, whether it's a shooting that happens, uh, a mass shooting, or uh, whether it's some racial injustice that occurs, or whether it's something that happens, um, you know, that you know to to women, uh, and we saw the women's movement. Uh, I think what what is needed more so than anything else is uh, a group or structure that uh, develops uh, the level of infrastructure, not just at a national level, but at a state and local level uh, that allows people to come together, to organize, to develop strategies for the local community and to be able to implement those and evaluate those strategies uh, in an ongoing and consistent way. Uh, the, I know the one of the largest challenges uh, to making something like that happen has to do with the resources, right? Yes, we're talking about volunteering, uh, and certainly you can volunteer. You know, you can mobilize seniors who are retired. Uh, of, oftentimes, these are younger people who are engaged in these types of efforts. Uh, but if you want to sustain it, people have to eat, people have to live, and they may be passionate about. Uh, these the topic at hand, but they still have to eat, uh, and the, and so they can't do it 24 hours a day, five days a week, uh, and oftentimes uh, because you know people's everyday lives uh, ha has to you know have to continue to to occur, they just don't have the the um, the fortitude or the type of stamina to stay with those issues. And so you'll see that you'll, you'll have the surge of community activism and volunteerism happening after an event, then it'll die down. And then another event will happen and boom, you have another surge of people out, you know, on the streets marching or, you know, pushing and calling legislators and senators, and then things will die down. And, and it's just this vicious cycle um, because there is no, real infrastructure to sustain any movement that uh, has occurred. I mean, we've seen them. We've seen Occupy, you know, Wall Streets, and we've seen the women's movements, and we've seen the racial justice movements. We've seen these cycles happen over and over again. Uh, but until we can develop the infrastructure and support those infrastructures, um, you know, I think uh, the role of volunteerism uh, won't be as effective as it could be. Okay, and um, then uh, another question was, uh, do, have you seen any specific intergenerational volunteer effort that stood out for you, young and old, here in Palm Beach County, working together in some way? Sure, I've seen um, uh, quite a bit of activism happening uh, around in the homeless world, especially, um, during the, the, the time that we were working with the encampment at John Prince Park and transitioning uh, those individuals. I saw young people, I saw older people coming together to support uh, the, our homeless neighbors uh, and to advocate for our homeless neighbors, um, you know, to advocate for shelters, for resources, for uh, fairness. Uh, so I've seen that on a number of occasions. I've seen uh, similar things happen here locally in Palm Beach County uh, around, um, you know, elections. Uh, and that's something that we typically don't get very involved with, but uh, it is a big thing here locally. Uh, just uh, having people uh, to uh, register, people to vote. Uh, getting people to sign petitions and, and to get, you know, things like Amendment 4 on the ballot, uh, having people pushing for uh, issues for a higher living wage or things of that nature. I've seen young people and, and older people working collaboratively together on, on a number of those types of issues. Okay. Uh, you've been very generous with your time, James. I know you have work to do. Um, you've opened up a lot of things to think about and ways we can follow up with each other, if we may. Um, 
I'd like to continue working with you in some way. Uh, are there any other questions that haven't been asked, Christine? Joni, you need to unmute yourself. Unmute. Unmute your, there. Unmute yourself. All right, I just thought I was unmuted and I guess you muted me, right? <laughs> uh, always a good idea with me. Um, James, you, something you alluded to and uh, I think Christine and Rosemary, is there's a difference between working with younger volunteers and older people as volunteers. What's appropriate for one is not necessarily appropriate for the other. Elders can have more resources and time. Younger people have to eat, as you said, you know? So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about that because a lot of us are trying to figure out how do we inspire seniors or what is appropriate for seniors uh, that may not be for younger people and vice versa. I think things that uh, would be more appropriate for seniors uh, would be uh, you know, social capital is something that's really big uh, with us, and you'll start to hear more about that moving forward. Uh, but, you know, something like just making phone calls for seniors. Or we've, we started to think about uh, pen pals and, and, um, and how we can integrate that into to our level of programming. Um, just being able to mentor families uh, and to be there as a support uh, for families who are living in poverty or, or moving out of poverty. You know, people who are uh, struggling with some of the issues caused by economic stress and uh, e even with mental health issues, they don't always come to, you know, their case manager or case. They go to people they know. And if they don't have people uh, that they can call and just talk to and to help, you know, sort through those issues, then it can be really challenging for them. So social capital is certainly uh, a, a big uh, opportunity, or uh, and I mentioned just making wellness calls and phone calls to to ensure that they're okay. But there are also opportunities for um, seniors to uh, to to get together and to address some of the social ills. I, I I don't think that's just for young people. I think that we really have to um, work with our seniors to. Um, you know, I, I think about something uh, like Medicare, right, which is something that is really important for our seniors uh, and figuring out a way to galvanize them to make sure that, you know, those protections are there or uh, to make sure that any other type of legislation that would adversely affect them um, would be um, are, are taken off the table are certainly opportunities for them. Um, I think seniors who are, are engaged in, in those type of efforts uh, are often more effective than sometimes young people because young people are inconsistent when it comes to, you know, say going to the polls or offering, you know, their support to certain candidates. Seniors are more consistent and they, you know, they will call and they will keep calling and they will voice their opinions about certain things. And so that level of advocacy for policies that uh, will support our seniors uh, is really, really important. And so, um, yes, I, I do think that there are a number of avenues that where seniors can, can, can be engaged and be very effective. Um, we've gone over the hour a bit, James. I don't wanna keep you further, but this has been a very productive conversation. Um, lots for us to chew on and, um, and we will be getting back to you if that's okay. Absolutely. Everybody knows that once I get someone in my net, they, they can't get free. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, um, thank you again. Uh, if there's no other questions, I think we're um, ready to sign off. Christine. No, no other questions, James. Thank you very much. It's been very informative. We look forward to hearing more from you and, and working with you in the future. Thank you all for joining us. Be sure to visit our website at EncorePBC.org for the list of our upcoming events. February is in, entirely 
for volunteerism. So lots of good information coming up there and um, look forward to seeing more of you on the call. Thank you for joining us today. All participants will receive a copy of the recording. So thank you so much and have a great day. You too. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you, James. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.